I read somewhere if you fall over 50 feet you're, and you land flat or something, let's say that your organs, set, that's when they start separating, tearing apart from each other inside your body. So after that, I guess you're pretty much, you have a real good chance of dying after 50 feet. When John Bakar climbs, he literally suspends his life from his fingertips. You can usually find him 200 feet above the valley floor of Yosemite National Park, where the vertical granite walls provide the world's best climbing. This is what John lives for. This is where he belongs. No ropes, no pitons, just hands, shoes, and a bag of chalk for grip. To the other climbers, John just may be the best free climber that ever lived. This is free soloing. The climb is called Crack Agogo, and John does it better than anyone else. In fact, no one else will even try it without ropes. Think of it, nothing to hold you to the sheer face of the rock other than the power of your own grip. When John climbs, there's usually no one there to admire his flawless technique, and no one there to help him if he's in trouble. He started climbing at the age of 14 with ropes, but four years later decided to go it alone. It's a, it's a big step to start free soloing. You take away the rope and it's, uh, it's really serious. You have, to know, you have to have a lot of confidence in your ability and be able to read the rock real well. And uh, you just don't jump into it, you know. John and his wife Brenda live right here at Yosemite where she works at the Park Hotel while John climbs for a living. He's totally committed to the sport and even though she knows the many dangers involved, Brenda can't change anything. She's never told you that I want you to do this for another year or two and then retire or shouldn't be doing this rock or that route or... No, she hasn't. But I made it clear to her that all I'm doing every day is, is going to climb, you know. If he stops, it's because uh, he wants to stop. Whenever he finds his limits. The key to free solo climbing is fitness. You can't afford to get tired 200 feet up a wall. Your life literally depends on your physical condition. And John devotes several hours a day just to working out, improving his strength, perfecting his balance. And it's taken me a long time to develop what I do in a workout. I've got it refined to a specific routine where I'm, you know, I'm doing certain things to get certain results. How important are your fingers to what you do? Uh, that's a real important part of the climber's workout is developing his finger strength because a lot of times that's all you have on the rock, you know, just a couple square inches of your fingers. What separates John from the other climbers is technique. His moves are smooth, calculated, effortless. The place to develop this is on the many boulders scattered throughout the park. When John does it, he always attracts a crowd. Everybody has to ask you if you have any consciousness or a fear of heights at all. Sure. I mean, if you know if you're way off the ground and you fall, you're going to die, so you're afraid of that. But if you're strapped into the rock and you look down, you, you know, it doesn't really do anything to me because I know I'm not going to fall. In Europe, rock climbing is even bigger, and John is a superstar there. But here in America, climbs like this go relatively unnoticed. That hasn't discouraged him. This is what he lives for. To him, it goes deeper than just wanting to be noticed. It's a way of life. And as far as he's concerned, a long and healthy one. I'm going to climb for the rest of my life. Are you sure about that? Yeah. You don't I, think there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a limit? I'm not getting tired of it. No, I like it. It's a, it's a healthy activity.